Undefeated with a record of 15 and 0, 12 by KO, ladies and gentlemen, Sergey Kobosev. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the white trunks with red letters, weighing in at 195 and one half pounds also, from Boston, Massachusetts. He's also undefeated, his record 14 and 0 with nine KOs, Introducing John, the Quiet Man, Ruiz. Something's gonna give. Ruiz unbeaten in 14, Kobozev in 15. And you don't often get two men with records like that facing off against each other, and there's something major is at stake. And there isn't. Kobozev unbeaten in 15, stop 12. Ruiz unbeaten in 14, stop 9. No names, really to talk of on Ruiz's record. He's from Boston, Massachusetts. And Sergei, Sergei Kopozev from St. Petersburg in Russia. Wasn't that Stalingrad or Leningrad at one point? And uh, Kopozev has got Teddy Atlas in his corner, who used to work with Mike Tyson, of course. So round one of a scheduled ten. Cruiserweight match this. Kopozev shorter by two inches. Tough man, Kobozev. Last beat uh, Dan Wofford on points in New York. Became Russian champion in his sixth professional fight. Beat uh, Alexander Mitrofanov in Russia. Knocked him out in seven rounds. Kobozev had his first six fights in Russia. He's been boxing in the States since June of 91, but been a pro since March of 1990. Ruiz, fairly new to the game, a pro since August of last year, but racked up 14 wins against, I would suggest, lowly kind of opposition. Beat the old journeyman Exum Spate on points over eight rounds last time in June. They're very determined individuals, of course, most of these Eastern Bloc fighters are. I'm sure he's very pleased to have shed that uh, daft head guard that they use in professional boxing's alter ego, amateur boxing. Past halfway in the first. And not a bad start from Ruiz, You're taking full advantage of his height and reach advantages. It's pretty cool as well. And it looks like Ruiz is doing enough to keep his nose in front here. And Cobbles are having a few problems getting to him at the moment. And neither man has ever been past eight rounds as a professional. So that's the end of the first, and I think uh, Ruiz has got that one. And anyway, back to that letter from Graham Quick. As I say, he should have entered the competition, but sent me a letter that was intended for a young lady by the name of Sandra. It was an impassioned plea from the heart. Come on, Sandra, give him a break. He sounds OK. And that's all I'm saying. Round two of the scheduled ten-round cruiserweight contest. Not at all difficult to tell these two apart. And you can see from that first round straight away that uh, Sergei Kovacev a bit reddened around the chops. 
And it's that long left hand from John Ruiz that's done it. John, the quiet man Ruiz, be shouting after this if he gets it. Something jab. Both men coming into this with unbeaten records. Ruiz 14 and 0, nine stoppages. Coppers have 15 and 0 with 12. And it's a big moment for John Ruiz. He's done well so far, and there's a cut now on Kobozev's left eye. And that doesn't look good, that's bleeding quite badly, in fact. And straight away, Rue is aiming for that. Halfway through the second, then. I'm not sure if Ruiz may have a cut as well. So it could have been a clash of heads that's done that. Face of Ruiz looks like he's been ten rounds, let alone two. See that blood flowing down the side of the left eye and into the eye, of course, there. Cobbles there just wiping it away. So Ruiz may just have this one in the palm of his hand. In fact, he hasn't got a cut. And it's a much more even round simply because Cobbles there might be realizing that time is against him and he wants to get rid of this fella. A nasty cut. Possibly on pure volume of punch, Kobazev might just have the edge here. Certainly been the busier of the two. Yeah, let's give it to him. Level things up. You got a tough fight for yourself with this kick. Come on. I had an interesting letter from Mr. Tom McGugan in Ochterara in Scotland. And he wanted to know which British world champion had held a world title for the longest. How many inside the distance wins he had. And what was his name? And I verified with my old mate, Bob Meat. No one knows better. And hopefully, if I've got the time, I'll give you those results to that question later. And you'll be very surprised. Right, right. Round three, this. Scheduled for ten cruiserweights. The taller John Ruiz took the first, I thought. Kobozeb busied him out of the second. What I'll do, I hope you'll indulge me, and uh, Mr. McGugan, is I'll go through those World British World Championship, British World Champion holders. Well, he's got Ruiz winning both. Billy Plimmer was world bantamweight champion way back in 1892 to 95. Three years he reigned. Don't know his record, I'm afraid. Peddler Palmer, 1895 to 99. Four years he reigned. Another one on three was uh, Jackie Brown, who was flyweight champion for three years. Peter Kane was uh, flyweight champion for five years. John Conte, of course, was uh, light heavyweight champion for three. Freddie Mills, he was light heavyweight champion for six years. And this will surprise you. Cobbles are still flailing away. 
And that's Ruiz's problem here. He would much prefer to have Kovacev on the end of those long arms. As I say, he hasn't fought in too high a class. Consequently, not sure how to handle this. At this level, you've got to create your opportunities. You can't hope they just appear. Although, a great opportunity when he cut Kovacev's left eye. Everyone, of course, credits Bob Fitzsimmons with being Britain's first and only heavyweight champion of the world until Lennox Lewis came on. But a lot of people forget he was middleweight champion as well between 1891 and 97. He was light heavyweight champion after the heavyweight title from 1903 to 1905. And of course, won the heavyweight title in 1897, held it for a couple of years. A span, in fact, of 10 years, Bob Fitzsimmons was champion. Only had... 62 fights. And that's the end. I think uh, Cobbles has got that one by the same margin as the second and for the same reason. Pure work rate. Coffett Simmons, in fact, a lot of people don't know about him. 1883 to 1914 he boxed. He packed it in when he was 52 years of age. 62 fights. He won 40, lost 9, 10 no decisions and stopped only 32 men. Freddie Mills had 52 knockout wins in 97 fights. Jack Kidberg had 57 knockout wins in 192. Ted Kid Lewis had 71 in 282 as we go into this fourth round. But the man you're looking for, Mr. McGugan, the highest ranked British world champion with knockout wins, was in fact Jimmy Wilde, 101 of 151. He won inside the distance, so there you go. He was uh, from Wales, of course, and was world flyweight champion for seven years, from 1916 to 1923. And my thanks for Bob Me for collaborating on that answer. Hope that satisfies you, Mr. McGugan. And John Rose really needs to double up on that jab. The first one that Kobozev is, is sort of taking and slipping by inside it, but uh, two together should just see him off here. Like that. Although not as quick as I would anticipate for a double jab. Another one thumps into the face of Ruiz, which is always already blooded and swollen around the left eye. only ploy that Ruiz should have here is just trying to stop Cobbles there from getting into arm's reach and you wouldn't have thought it was hard would you although I must admit I used to hate fighting these storming types I never leave you alone so we're getting these rather correct but uh, ponderous left hands coming from Ruiz but the work rate, although not a lot, not a lot of, of uh, Kovacev's punches are clean, or even landing on the target. Once again, the blood flowing from that Kovacev left eye. Would you keep your eye on the target, John? See him there. Just take his eye off the chin of, of uh, Kovacev, which is why that right hand fell short. 30 seconds then to go to the end of the fourth. Once again, work rate from Kovacev, but no power. I don't think there's been much in this fourth round, to tell you the truth. The inaccuracy of uh, Kovacev's work is not impressing me in this round. So a level one for me. Between them. And I must say those uh, lads at IWBR, thanks again for those prizes you offered for the heavyweight competition I set. And those of you who didn't get one of those prizes, 
You can always buy the uh, rankings worth having. Right to the IWBR at 147 Two Mile Hill Road, Kingswood, Bristol. BS 151BH. 30 quid a year. Or just under in Britain. Round seven. This one scheduled for ten, and Rui's got his nose blooded in the sixth, and it's speeding again here. And uh, Ruiz has never boxed a man quite like Kobozev. And we've got some great boxing action coming up on Eurosport and in Britain over the next week. Don't forget the 18th of September, the Granby Halls in Leicester. Chris Pyatt defending his WBO middleweight championship. Some good fights on that bill as well. And that's live on Eurosport tomorrow night. With Derek. Well, Al's Bernstein's got this 57 points apiece. I must admit, I've got it. Well, in fact, I'll go, the, I'll go levels with uh, Al. It's been a very hard fight to score on occasion. All depends what you're looking for. Those singer, single but uh, harder, better punches from Ruiz, or the busy slapping types from uh, Kobozev. I'll leave this one to the judges, I think. Back to those fixtures in Britain. The Winter Gardens in Cleethorpe. Steve Lewson defending his Midlands Area Championship against Cordwell Hilton. St Andrews Sporting Club in Glasgow. Eliminated for the British Lightweight Championship between Peter Bradley, side of the Lightweight away title, Peter Bradley and Paul Charters. Should be a good one. Tommy Gilmore. Glanville's Club in Northampton. John Cox and co present promoting there. Good main event as well. Kevin Mabber against Richard O'Brien. That should be worth seeing. Grand Hall Wembley on Wednesday the 22nd. Gary Jacobs, Daniel Bichere for the European World Away Championship. Jacobs, of course, the holder. We've got that live for you on Eurosport. Same night, York Hall, Bethnal Green. Frank Warren presents. The vacant British Broadway Championship between the comebacking Pat Bryan, Pat Barrett, and Del Bryan. And at the Aquarius in Chesterfield, Spencer Alton, Mike Shinfield, present a, a good little bill. It's the end of the seventh round, and I personally think that uh, Cobbles ever nicked that. So, Cobbles have now a round in front of my card, 67 to 66. Sorry, my apologies, 77 to 76. Two rounds to go. Ah, what am I talking about? This is the eighth, my apologies. Three to go, including this one. 67 plays 66. There you can see the uh, volume of punches that Cobbles ever has been throwing, as far as the computer are concerned. But uh, Ruiz, although more sparing with his punches, is actually connecting with them. Oh, stiff jab. And poor old Cobbles ever, although he's very game, big heart, and tough, he's still walking on to these uh, ramrod jabs of Ruiz. Ruiz is not a great fighter in the uh, true sense of the word, but 67-66, um, well, the other way around. I forgive you, Al. Don't forget that quiz question. I set you. Who was the first African 
to win a world championship. He was the first man to put Cassius Clay on the deck. From Mr. Mick McEwen in Retford in Knotts. Answers to me. You know the address by now. Halfway through the eighth. And ironically for John Ruiz, he hasn't actually gone seeking an early win here. He could have really put Kovacev under some pressure with the right hand and made that eye worse. I hate to say it like that because uh, no one likes to hurt anyone in this game. It just happens to be part of the sport. But he hasn't done it. Kovacev, a step up in class for Ruiz. St. Petersburg in Russia. I'm sure it was Leningrad before, wasn't it? Call me ignorant. But once again, this looks like Kovacev's work rate, although it's sloppy. Might have his nose in front in this eighth round. Rue is now forced to hold as he starts to tire. Hmm. Interesting. Well, I've now got Rivers two rounds in front. 77 75, two to go. Don't forget that Barry Hearn show. Grab your halls, Leicester. Tomorrow night, live on Eurosport, Chris Pyatt defending against Hugo Corti. Also in action, Herbie Hyde against Everett Bigfoot Martin. Mickey Driscoll, British welterweight title, light welterweight title, in there between uh, him and Tony McKenzie. Also my mate OJ on the bill. And this is the ninth. Ruiz is throwing far fewer punches but landing with most of them, or at least half of them. Whereas uh, Kovacev throwing a lot more but landing with only about a quarter. You decide. Although I must admit you didn't see rounds five and six. Call them level if you like. One thing about Kopazev, he's always fit. As you can see, this work rate he started off with and kept up has been quite amazing. Oh, lovely shot from Ruiz. And again, and again, the left hook that time. Well, I hope I haven't tattled too much tonight. Half a minute to go in the ninth. Well, I think I'll leave this one to the judges. Don't forget there's three of them. And uh, 
uh, bandage looks like it's come loose on uh, Kobozev's right. Go on, in fact, it's through his left glove. Cool, where are you going to go there? Well, I'm going to have to give that that uh, ninth round to Kobozev simply because Ruiz got through with two tremendous right hands and a left hook, but that's not that's about it, really. One more big one, Johnny. You won that round big, big, Johnny. <laughs> and they thought he won it big. Well, they may well may well have done. I didn't. Tenth and final round then, and I've got Cobbles have a couple of points in front now, coming to the last round. In fact, I'm going to revise my score, and that's unlike me. I'm going to make this 86-85 in favour of Kobozev. Just one point in it, so still within Ruiz's grasp here. It's a damn nuisance, isn't it? I, there's no, there's no good reason for having tape on the cuffs of gloves. None at all. Gloves very rarely fly off when punches are being thrown, and there is a sleeve, or there should be anyway, to cover the laces. Uh, on my card anyway, that Ruiz is going to lose for the first time in 15 fights. As I say, it's been a... It's been a... It's been, I'm looking for a word. <laughs> it's been hard to score. Sometimes. Ruiz from Boston, Massachusetts. And... Uh, Kobozev now based in New York. A minute to go then in the tenth and final round. And this incredible work rate of Kobozev has been quite impressive. A lot of his punches, though, have been pretty poor. And not landing on the target. So approaching the final 10 seconds then. Too late for a knockout now. Either way. Well, it's all over now. Well, I think Kobozev's got that last round as well, and you probably do too. Terrible job. Terrible job, really. Mm. 96-94 on my card. Six rounds to four. That translate as for Kobozev. Sergei Kobozev looks like he's got his 16th straight win. But a bit too small and doesn't punch hard enough, I don't think, for the big boys. Take the likes of all in Norris, for instance. How would he get on with him? He wouldn't, would he? Well, they know it's close, don't they? No one's proclaiming victory. Yeah. 
And what that percentage chart doesn't show is, in fact, how many punches actually landed. Ladies and gentlemen, we go to the scorecards. Elmo Adolf scores the bout, 97 to 95. He has it for John Ruiz. That's five rounds to three and two even. Freddie Steinwinder scores the bout, 96, 94. Well, that's the same as me. Kobos Six then. rounds to four. And Martin Cosino scores the bout, 98, 94 for the winner Ooh, by me. Six rounds to decision. two. Sergey. Oh, and Kobos Kobos gets it. Six rounds to two and two even. I don't know how he got a score like that in a close fight like that. Well, we've got the main event. Ray Mercer coming up. I hope you'll stay with us. And Kobos a very happy man.